Hey guys. Okay, I hope you're ready because I am now going to attempt to review every foundation that MAC currently has in production as of now, which is October 2010. Pro Longwear has just been released. Moisture Blend is now a sad, sad song off in the distance somewhere, which is kind of sad because I actually kind of like that one. All right, let's get started. This is how this video is going to work. I am going to go down the line and start talking about every foundation that MAC currently has in production in alphabetical order, of course, because I'm a Virgo. And because foundation is really going to vary from person to person, it's a very personal thing, I'm going to attempt to refrain from including too many personal thoughts or opinions and instead just give you a general overview and comparison of all of the foundations that MAC makes. If at any time, however, you would like to see a more personal, slightly less scripted review with my own thoughts and opinions on whatever foundation I'm talking about in the overview, you can click on one of these links and it will go to a separate video where I'm going to talk about whether or not I really like this foundation personally and what my favorite application techniques are for it. So don't worry, these links will come back as I'm talking about the foundation. They will also be in the info section. My hope here is that this will be the guide to MAC foundations that I have personally always wanted to see. I think I'm up for the task. Probably not. I should be drinking, but I'm sober. Let's get started. Base and Body Foundation is water-based and water-resistant. It is not transfer-resistant and it is not waterproof, but it does stay put really, really, really well. It will last a long time. This is a great foundation for face and body, surprise. This is really good for evening out skin tone on legs, for example, or arms, shoulders, chest, back, head, shoulders, knees, and toes, the whole thing. Being a liquid foundation, this is very easy to blend and custom mix colors. You could easily have just four of these in your kit and have enough foundation to match just about any skin tone that you needed to. Also, at about a quarter of the price per ounce of any other MAC foundation, you do get a lot of bang for your buck. The coverage on this is light to medium. You could build this to something that's a little bit more opaque. You can also take a little bit out and put it on a palette. I just put it on my hand here so you could see it. But um, put this on a palette and just leave it for a minute or two. And then as it starts to dry, it will get a little bit more thick and you'll get more coverage out of it. Or if you wanted, you can take a little bit of select cover up and mix that with this and get a more opaque version of it. A word of warning, however, this has a shelf life of two years, like I think every foundation that MAC makes. After a year, however, this separates. If you leave this out just at room temperature, you'll go to use it one day and notice that it's kind of exploded all over the place. It's turned into some sort of cottage cheese looking toxic crap and it smells funky and you can't use it. I would recommend putting this in the refrigerator and then decanting whatever amount you need into a small travel jar like this, which is kind of what I do. Any liquid foundation, by the way, keep in your refrigerator and it will extend the shelf life of the product for usually twice the time that it actually says. Full Coverage Foundation is one of MAC's heavier foundations. It comes in a compact just like this. It's a cream that's basically a concealer in a compact. It's great for those of you who really want to feel like you have foundation on your face. It doesn't feel super, super heavy, but you can tell that it's there. It's very, very versatile. You can use this for both face and body. Applying this with a sponge will give you the most coverage that you can get out of it. You can also apply it with a fluffy brush for light, buildable coverage. I have seen Goss Makeup Artist use this several times and then shear it out with a damp sponge after he's applied it. A little side note, word of warning on this guy though, Max Full Coverage Foundation, their Studio Finish Concealer and Studio Fix Powder Foundation all have large amounts of titanium dioxide in them. It's not scary, titanium dioxide reflects light though, and so if you do have this on and someone takes a non-professional picture of you with a flash, you may end up looking a couple shades lighter in the face 
than you actually do in person. Keep that in mind. If you're out at a club wearing this and someone's like, hey, let's all take a picture and they smash their faces together and click and you look like Casper the Friendly Ghost, this might be the culprit. Mineralize Foundation in a compact sort of cream thing. It came out shortly after MAC Discontinued Moisture Blend, which kind of made me think that they would be similar, and they do have some similar characteristics, but they are not the same foundation at all. This is a very hydrating foundation, but unlike Moisture Blend, it can be used on oily skin rather well. It also doesn't slip and slide the way that Moisture Blend sort of kind of had a tendency to do. Once you set this with powder, it's there and it feels like you have nothing on your skin, which is really nice if you don't like the feeling of having a lot of foundation on your skin. This is the foundation that I felt on my skin the least out of all of the foundations that MAC makes. I thought that this had the most lightweight feeling to it. It has a light to medium coverage. MAC actually says that it's medium to buildable. I would disagree with that and say that it's light to medium. It is not water resistant, but it will last you the better part of the day. This is very easy to apply. A dream to blend with the right brush. I would recommend the 130, which actually launched with this foundation. If you haven't seen me flopping this thing around, it comes in a compact like this. And there is a little spot under here where they put a sponge that I have gotten rid of because I just don't keep those. All foundations that come in a compact are easy to travel with, which is a bonus, um, but this does need to be set with a powder. I did mention that I set it with a powder. Do set it with a powder, otherwise it will kind of start to slip a bit on the skin. Mineralized Satin Finish Foundation is a foundation that MAC claims to have natural light reflecting properties due to the micro minerals that are in the foundation. Basically, this means glitter. It is a light to medium coverage liquid foundation that does dry to a very nice satin finish, but it does have a little bit of a sort of shimmery reflex glitter thing going on about it. It's very subtle, but it's there. At first, this is just going to make your skin look very dewy and very, very pretty, but as the day goes on, you may find that some of this sort of glitter kind of effect sort of migrates into any lines that you have on your face. Therefore, I recommend this as a foundation used primarily on younger skin, not so much on mature skin. You can do it and it looks just fine, but you're going to want to set it with powder. And using too much powder on mature skin can sometimes be a tricky endeavor, so just keep that in mind. This is one of MAC's more moisturizing foundations. It's listed on their website as being for normal to dry skin, and I would agree with that. It's very, very comfortable to wear and does have a very barely there feeling to it. You can't really tell that you have this on your skin, which if you don't like the feeling of foundation on your skin is a really nice thing. <music> I've included two foundations in the mineralized dry category. I have Mineralized Skin Finish Natural and Max Mineralized Loose Foundation. I know that a lot of you think of Max Mineralized Skin Finish Natural as a setting powder and in fact it is a very nice one. It does however make a really good foundation if you don't need a lot of coverage and you just want to kick back a little bit of the shine on your skin. This is a great men's foundation if you don't want to look like you have a lot on your face. I use this one all the time. I actually keep this in my car and it just kind of kicks around and if I need something real quick I can just sort of slap it on my face. Put it right over moisturizer and it looks really well. It does nothing for coverage except even out your skin tone a little bit and like I said kick back a little bit of the shine. It's also one of the only foundations, it's the only foundation that MAC makes that has a bit of a pleasing smell to it. Um, I think it's the mineral baking thing that goes on, um, but it's quite nice. Mineralized Loose Foundation, which is this one right here, is sort of like a loose version of Mineralized Skin Finish Natural, but with heavier coverage. It feels a little bit heavier on the skin for it, but not a whole lot. If you know what Studio Fix Powder Foundation feels like, this is kind of the same. If you don't like the feeling of dry powder foundations, I would steer clear of this one. This doesn't have the same sort of feeling that dry powder foundations have because it's not a lot of coverage, it's just a little bit of something on your skin, but this one does. It comes in a little jar, as you can see here, twist top, and um, it's got this little applicator-y sponge thing, 
comes with this foam protector thing that you're supposed to take out that I just haven't. Um, and then gall that apparently you can't get out. Okay, I got it. Um, and you just take the product and you're supposed to use this and buff it on your skin or you could use a brush like a Kabuki brush or a MAC 109 would work really, really well. I've seen a lot of people who like this foundation apply it with a damp powder puff by just taking a little bit of the product and getting it on a slightly damp powder puff and buffing it into the skin. Um, some people do claim that this is medium coverage. I really say that this is light coverage. It doesn't do a whole lot for the skin. It's just going to even out your skin tone a little bit and um, that's about it. But these are both good everyday foundations for anyone who doesn't want a whole lot of coverage or doesn't like any sort of creamy or liquid product. <laughs> Pro Longwear Foundation is a new foundation that MAC just launched this fall. They describe it on their website as a sheer to buildable coverage foundation. I would say that it's straight medium to buildable. It is water-based and water-resistant. It is also transfer-resistant. It's the only MAC foundation that is transfer-resistant. It is a very, very long-wearing foundation. This claims to wear well for 15 hours. I actually agree. This is the only foundation that MAC makes that you could sleep in and then get up the next morning and still have a fair amount of it on your skin. Trust me, I tried it to test it and it, it actually did work. It is a slightly heavier foundation. Someone who isn't used to the feeling of having foundation on their skin might not like this. If you're used to wearing foundation, you're probably not gonna notice. It doesn't feel super, super heavy. It just does feel like you have something on your skin. One word of advice with this though, Resist the urge to set it with powder. It doesn't need it. It dries to a nice nearly matte finish and setting it with powder will ruin the longevity that it has or would have had had you just left it alone. It looks really nice without powder. The same in hour one as it does in hour eight, nine, 10, 12. It looks great. Don't worry about powder. You just don't need to with this. Select liquid foundation. This is a matte liquid foundation that's best suited for those with normal to oily skin. Dry skin or even more balanced skin may notice a little bit of flaking and general grossness when using this. Just use this with a good moisturizer if you do like a foundation that dries to a nice matte finish. You don't need a powder with this, but you can if you do like setting powder or you just like the look of an ultra matte face. If mineralized liquid foundation is a good foundation for normal to dry skin for everyday use, then this would be a really good foundation for normal to oily skin everyday use. Did that make sense? <music> Studio Fix Powder, the Soccer Mom Foundation. This is a great on the go, I'm too busy to fix my face kind of foundation. Comes in a compact like this. It does have a spot for a sponge. Like full coverage foundation, this does have a large amount of titanium dioxide. As I mentioned before, this isn't a bad thing, but it reflects light. So with non-professional flash photography, this may show up a couple shades lighter on your skin than it does in person. You can apply this with the sponge that it comes with. You can apply this with a brush. You can apply this with your finger and a pinch. I've done it before. This is a really wonderful keep it in your car kind of foundation. I, I actually recommend it for that. If you need to do a touch up and you need just a little bit more than a pressed powder, this is your guy. It has medium, maybe light to medium coverage, and it does feel like you have a powder on your face. It's not a bad feeling, it's just you can kind of tell that it's there if you did your whole face with this. This also does make a really good setting powder if you want a little bit more coverage than just a normal setting powder. Um, just be aware of the whole titanium dioxide flash photography thing. In a professional setting, this doesn't matter at all, they'll compensate for stuff like that. You won't even notice it. Otherwise, you might want to pick a color that's a couple shades darker than your own skin, and that might look a little bit weird, so just keep that in mind. 
Okay, I know that I said I was going to try to refrain from any sort of personal opinions about these foundations. But um, I have to say, Studio Fix Fluid um, is one of my two favorite foundations by MAC. The other one is Face and Body. This is a liquid foundation. It's sort of heavy and creamy in consistency. It does have some silicone products in it, so it has a lot of slide when you put it on the skin. It goes on really nice, but it might not be the best for everyday use because of the silicone that's in it. Will have a tendency to clog pores. It dries to what MAC calls a natural matte finish. I would say that it's more of a satin ish kind of mattish sort of finish you don't have to use powder with this i tend to not but you can use a little bit of powder and actually using a something like a blot powder in the t-zone or oily areas of the face just a light dusting would not be outside the realm of ordinary at all i do know a few people that don't like this foundation because either the silicone that's in it or they find it to be too gloppy and difficult to work with the reason that I like this so much is because this photographs beautifully. Every time I've done a video on YouTube and I have gotten a compliment on my skin, every time I have gotten a compliment on my skin, this is the foundation that I'm wearing. I don't think that I have bad skin because I don't get compliments on it when I'm wearing other foundations. It's just funny. I've noticed every time somebody says, wow, your skin looks great, this is the foundation I have on. Studio Moisture Tint is a product that's really meant to be used as a moisture and foundation in one step. It's got coverage, but it's light coverage. As tinted moisturizers go, I have to say, this is one of the better ones, one of the best ones, if not the best one I have ever used. I tend to not favor tinted moisturizers personally because I can just take a little moisturizer and a little foundation, mix it together, and I got tinted moisturizer. So I kind of see this as a waste of money. But as tinted moisturizers go, like I said, this is one of the best ones I've ever used. If you want something for everyday use, you want to skip the whole moisturize your face and then put on foundation sort of step, this is great. The tube that it comes in is also really convenient because you can just squeeze out whatever amount that you want. It's not glass, it's not gonna break, so you can travel with it quite easily. Um, touch this up with powder after you've put it on for a really, really nice, natural, light coverage, sheer sort of foundation. Studio Sculpt Foundation is a gel-based foundation that provides medium to buildable coverage. And while Max says that this dries to a satin finish, it does need powder on top of it in order for it to set and just look nice. MAC also claims that this is a very hydrating foundation that instantly revitalizes the skin. I wouldn't go that far, but it doesn't feel that bad on your face. I've seen a number of reviewers on YouTube who have claimed that this broke them out. Keep that in mind. I've also known a lot of people that really liked Moisture Blend, which was discontinued, that favor this as a substitute. I'll be honest, this foundation takes a little bit of getting used to. It's slightly tricky to work with. It's different than any other foundation that MAC makes. Um, I don't know if that's because of the gel thing that it's got going on or not. Um, it's just a little bit different. Uh, try it out though. Don't not try it just because I say it's a little bit weird. Um, some people really like this. <music> Studio Tech Foundation in a compact. If any of you have tried one of Mac's um, cream bronzers that came out with To The Beach, this one is Weekend. You kind of know what Studio Tech is like. It is a cream to powder finish foundation. And, ooh, this one comes in a thing, and I actually left the sponge in this. This is what the sponge looks like that comes with these guys. Comes in a compact just like that. Um, again, cream to powder finish. It has a medium to buildable, sort of medium to full coverage, and feels like a medium to full coverage foundation would feel on your face. MAC claims that this has light diffusing properties and that it smooths and softens the lines on your face. I disagree. I don't think that's bad that it doesn't do it. I just think that it didn't do it. I didn't see any sort of light diffusing or any sort of lines moving. But that's fine. It is a cream to powder foundation in a compact. Um, some people really love this foundation. I know that Beat Face Honey uses this in all of her videos, and she looks absolutely flawless in every video that she does. 
completely gorgeous. Um, so check it out. If you like cream to powder foundations, give this one a try and see what you think. All right, I think that's everything. This was seven pages of notes, scripty things that I typed up on um, foundation. Holy crap, that was a lot. I hope this was informative. I hope that um, it was helpful. I hope that it was entertaining. I hope that it wasn't too long. Check out, like I said, the other videos for a little bit more in-depth, um, less scripted, opinionated, sometimes obnoxious review on any of these foundations. And always email me if you have any questions and ask each other questions too. That's what the comment section is for. Um, yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Take care. Drive safe.